What's going on lads and welcome back to the channel. We're for exhausted. So in today's episode, we're cracking on with the turbo build. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing our white man gauge into the MX-5. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be wiring everything up, apart from basically putting the sensor into the downpipe. Because there's no point in my opinion screwing it in now into this existing downpipe to then have to unscrew it to put it into the aftermarket one which we're gonna be using for the turbo. It's just a waste of time to get all the way down there under the car and screw it in. So yeah, we're gonna be doing everything but that and having it just power to it and it plugged into the ECU. So everything makes sense. But yeah, let's crack on with the build boys. So guys, got it right here. Let me crack open the box, I'll show you what comes inside. So first of all, we have our AEM air fuel ratio gauge. This is the actual thing that you look at. Just right now. We have got... So we've got our wideband O2 sensor. Right here. And that's got a plug. So this is obviously going to plug into there. Some sort of orientation, we'll work it out like that. Plugs in. And then this, I take it goes into the back of here. So we've got these two wires, which connects to a wide band. And then we've got this bad boy, which is going to connect to the ECU, I presume. Well, it is going to connect to the ECU. So we are basically going to put all of the wires kind of in place. I'm not going to attach this to the ECU because obviously I'm getting a mega squirt. So there's no point, like I said, attaching this to the stock ECU. It's just pretty pointless. But I'm just going to have this end coming down where the ECU is in the passenger foot one. But yeah, I guess let's get into the engine bay, start taking stuff apart, and get this bad boy installed. So first of all, we're gonna decide where we wanna install the actual gauge. I'm gonna be putting it right in there. So that's where it's gonna go. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to remove this bad boy. So I'm gonna use some long nose pliers, grab it, probably best grabbing it in the middle so we can pull it out and hopefully don't damage it. And then just pull it really nice and tight. Just like that, and that whole assembly comes out. So guys, we've got that thing completely out. What I did is I separated the front face bit from the back of it like that, and I've bottled it in like that. It's not flush, which is really frustrating me, but then, I don't know, if it, it doesn't look bad at all like that. But then, as long as I can get the other one to match it on the other side, I think it will look fine. But if I can't, it's gonna frustrate me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get out my other gauge, um, but to be fair, I've got like a temp free boost gauge, quite a cheap one. But um, let me see if I can angle this camera up at me a bit more. So yeah, I've got like a cheap temp free boost gauge for the moment. Um, which decided was pointless in buying, so I'm not going to install that. I'm actually going to order an AEM boost gauge. And the reason for that is it's a boost gauge and boost controller in one. So if they both stick out like that, then that will look perfectly fine. So yeah, they're both going to be the same size. So I'm gonna just install it like that. We'll see what it looks like after, and I can always unplug it and put it somewhere else if it really frustrates me that much. So yeah, what we've done, it comes with a little thing like this, little bracket to bolt it in. So just kind of start screwing that down to basically lock this in place, just like that. And then where have I put my, this bit of thing? So basically, this wants to be attached into here. Something like that. So basically, you get it in there and just click it back in place, just how it was in the first place. So then we've got all of that back together like that with the boot gauge on the front. All you want to be careful at this point is there's two little bits. So if you can see one there and one on the other side there, they need to basically go horizontally. So because that's where they basically this clips in. So basically, in short, that is perfect horizontal and your gauge is perfectly upright, which I've already done. But yeah, that's perfect. So that can slot back in there basically now. So basically, we're gonna feed the wires through this hole into the back of this. And then we're gonna take them out in the passenger footwell because the ECU is in the passenger footwell. And there's also some nice, easy to reach grommets down there as well, which we can use to make our life a lot easier. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that now. So guys, the first wire we're gonna feed is this one. So it's got a little plug on the end and then I believe six wires, if I can count, six or seven. It's got seven little wires on the end. So this is the one for the power to connect to the ECU. So basically what we're gonna have is we're gonna have, I mean, I'm guessing here, I haven't read the instructions, but the red and black, so they're gonna be your power cables. So you connect those to ignition source, which most likely will use the big blue cable underneath the driver's steering wheel. Um, and then these ones, I'm not sure which one's which, but 
there'll be like a wideband and narrowband option, all of that to connect into the ECU, whether you're using stock or aftermarket ECU. Um, and I believe some of these will be optional. I mean, I don't see what we're going to need to use seven cables for. But yeah, we want to feed that down to the passenger footwell. I think the easiest way to do that is going to be to poke it through from the top, because it will just use a bit of gravity to help it get down. But um, what we're probably best doing is removing the head unit just so we can kind of poke around around there a bit more. So I'll show you what we're doing, guys. So we're gonna remove our head unit just so we can see and access what's around the back of here a bit better. So I've just got a plastic trim on here, depending whether you're using stock or aftermarket. It will depend on what bit you've got, you've got here. And then this, I need the little keys preferably. Right, I'm gonna go find my head unit removal keys um, to make this a bit easier. So guys, I can't find my head unit removal keys, so this is going to take some improvisation. I'm going to need two flathead screwdrivers, I think, and I'll be able to do it. So let me grab another flathead screwdriver. This is just what we're going to do. So we're going to poke one of these on each side, like that. You can kind of see the clips which are holding it in. Just like that, so we managed to get that out just about. So we take this out. and. this quickly or find somewhere where it can rest where the wires aren't being pulled too hard so we've got those and that this is the only one which is being annoying for us the rest of them can just sit on my lap like that so basically we want to find a way through here so guys what I've worked out is you can basically put this down the far right side of this hole and we're going to basically zip tie it in place to ensure that it doesn't move around and get caught by any of the things moving at the back of here. So we'll leave a little bit of slack, just like that, to plug it in there. And then now we want to get this side and work away into, a, into the footbay down there. So I presume that's fairly straightforward. So we can see our cable coming out of here, so we'll pull that through. Just make sure to hold that side so we've got some slack. And that side's gonna come out there, which is perfect. So we can always extend all those cables, and we're gonna have to do that, because let's face it, we're not gonna be able to get the, grip, the red one to the ignition wire all the way to over there. There may be another ignition source around the back of here. I'll have a look. But uh, if not, that's the one which I know definitely works. But yeah, now we've got that into the footwell. That is perfect, so now we're going to take our other wires and connect them all up. So this one's obviously going to go in the engine bay. That's a wire band with a plug to attach that in. And this one we're going to put through the firewall and bring up to up here. So this one's going to be more difficult, or well, a lot more difficult, because we're going to have to pull it up through there. And it needs to go through a certain way, I think. But yeah, let's go around to the engine bay and I'll show you where we're putting it through. The very bottom of the washer bottle, this should be both on a 1.8 and 1.6, but we've definitely got a pump on a 1.8. We're going to pull this rubber bit off, which is probably a bit more difficult. There we go, so that grommet is completely off. And we have to basically see, and we're basically going to feed this all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a tiny slit in the centre of this grommet, so we can still put the grommet back, and it will be a lot more watertight inside the cabin. So now we've got that pushed through nicely, we can just pull it all the way through. leave a little bit on the end so that's going to come through right there and I'll stop O2 sensor if we can see it it's right there so it needs to go not very far at all so now we've got all of our wire inside the engine bay here we're going to have to feed that up to the exact same location where we brought the other one through before which is right there if you can see it sticking out right about there so we're just basically going to feed the other wire so it goes up there, so they're both up there for the gauge. So now we've got both our wires in here, it's just a really a game of matching them up. So the top one goes right in there like that, it's plugged in nicely. These are very straightforward to plug in which is really nice, they literally, I don't even need to touch the harness. They're both plugged in perfectly, so now we're going to go ahead Cut these wires back out of the way. Okay guys, before that, what we're going to do, we're going to do a bit more slight modification. 
in order to get this to fit. Just unplug both of these. So, I'm not sure if you can see, but these wires are coming through the bottom. And because this is quite deep, it's actually like pushing the wires. So we're just going to cut a section out of here at the bottom. Just cut a whole slot out of there for the wires to fit through so it doesn't crimp them and break them. So, as you can probably see now, if I just break some of this dirty plastic out. The way we've got a nice slot in the bottom of this, which is directly at the bottom, which should work perfectly. Let's have a look. So as you guys can see, we've done that. And then we want to just literally re-plug both of these back in. There's one. And two. And I'll basically feed those through the bottom of there. And basically we're gonna have to pull these through a bit more. And through our little bottom bit. And that should work perfectly. And then that's plugged in just like that. That's perfectly upright. I actually like the look of that, you know, now it's all mounted in. Nice and sturdy, so that's not coming anywhere. Perfecto. So that's the AEM gauge installed onto here. We're gonna have the other one, like exactly the same one there. I actually like that, it gives it a bit more of a like, 3D look rather than just being completely flat. So yeah, I'm liking that a lot. So now all we've got to do is attach these wires in place behind there with a zip tie. So in the middle of here, attach them to the far right side so that these mechanisms don't move them. You can actually look at it down here. They're not moving at the moment, but obviously over time they might move around slightly. So we're gonna zip tie them to the side. And then we can basically go ahead and get all of these wires into the right place. And that's pretty much all we're gonna be doing for today because like I was saying, there's no point connecting it all up until I've got the aftermarket ECU and everything. That'll be like one of the last things I'll do connecting it all together. That's where the boost gauge is gonna be. We're also gonna have a variety of other gauges on the thing. So we're basically gonna have oil temp, oil pressure, and water temp. Now, those gauges, I am still in a dilemma of where I'm gonna put them because they're ones which obviously you wanna monitor but they're the two main ones, AFR and Boost, which are gonna be up there, which is always gonna be in my driving side. I can see that in the corner of my eye. This one on the side here, if you can see, this little air vent doesn't seem to be in a very good position for me to see that quite often. So what I'm thinking, I think I'm gonna put three gauges, depending on whether I'll fit them down here. I will show you right to where I'm gonna put them. Hold on, guys. So yeah, I'm planning on putting the three gauges all along here. So one, two, three. And we've got our little light to say if we've activated, I'm not too sure what it is, but our little metal bit down there, which we need to do before the key. So I'm thinking of relocating that light somewhere else, maybe up here above those. Or just, you know, just somewhere where it makes sense to put it. I'm not too sure exactly where yet, but that's what I'm thinking of doing because these are not needed. This, actually, they do nothing the two buttons down here. So I'm thinking hopefully we can fit three along there, that would be ideal. If not, then I'm not 100% sure where I'm gonna put them. I thought another option would be to put them along here, so like one, two, three. But you know, I've taken this off and that means I'm gonna have to drill through that, drill through the dashboard, which is a lot more effort than drilling through that little plastic piece. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait and decide on that. But um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, guys. So yeah, guys, now we're back where we all started on my beloved Sparco Sprint bucket seat. But yeah, that's all for today's episode of the wide band install. That's part one, like I was saying before, part two is gonna be wiring it all up and you know, calibrating the sensor, everything like that, which we're gonna do after we get the aftermarket ECU, which is gonna be mega squirt if I don't change my mind in the next week or so. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hope you installed this effort. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this tutorial useful if you're doing this yourself on an MX-5. It's gonna be a pretty similar process, whether it's Mark 1, Mark 2, or NA6 or NA8. I mean, it's all pretty, pretty similar. But yeah, like I said, thanks for watching. Smash that thumbs up button if you found this useful. It really, really helps me out. And it'll be awesome if you can subscribe down below if you'd like to keep up to date with the latest exhausted content with my Mark 1 MX-5 build. We're doing a turbo build on it at the moment, but it's also gonna be an engine build coming soon and loads more awesome modifications on my MX-5. But yeah, thanks for watching, and until the next one, guys, Adios.